Kaya naman tayo na po ay dadako upang siya ay akin ng ipakilala ang atin pong panauhing tagapagsalita ay nagtapos ng Bachelor of Science in Medical Technologies at nagtapos din ng Doctor of Medicine. Siya po ay nag-training sa East Avenue Medical Center, Department of Pediatrics, noong 2014 hanggang 2017. At noong 2007 hanggang ngayon, kasalukuyang siya po ay nagsisilbi bilang City Health Physician ng City Health Office sa atin pong lungsod. Uh, nagsisilbi bilang General Practitioner and General Pediatrician, walang iba kundi si Dr. Cherry Lynn A. Ligaspi. Bigyan po natin siya ng maraming virtual clap. Good morning po. Good morning po. Uh, good morning, Sir Randall. Good morning po sa DepEd family. And nagpapasalamat po ako dahil in-invite po ako today for this uh, virtual lecture uh, regarding pediatric COVID-19 vaccination. And nagpapasalamat din po ako sa lahat ng dumalo po today. So, can we start na po, Sir Randall? <laughs> So, so, magsimula na po tayo. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Legazpi from the City Health Office. So, simulan po natin uh, kung ano nga ba ulit ang COVID-19. So, COVID-19 is an illness caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS-CoV-2. In the, sa Estados Unidos uh, and sa buong mundo, fewer cases ang nakikita na COVID-19 sa bata kumpara sa adults. So, first slide pa lang tayo, sir. So, whereas children comprises about 22% of the U.S. population, more than 15% of uh, all the cases of COVID-19 reported to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention were among children. So, sa kabata, karaniwan po dito ay mild at ang paggaling po nila ay supportive care po lamang. So, next slide. Ang sakit na ito ay na-discovery sa Wuhan, China noong December 2019 at mula noon ay kumalat na sa buong mundo. Ang WHO ay nagdeklara ng global pandemic noong March 11, 2020 and as of October 28, 2020, 44 na po ang nakumpirmang may COVID-19 at 1.1 million dito ay namatay globally. So, paano nga po ba nakakalat ang COVID-19? So, it is a highly infectious virus. Lubha po itong nakakahawa. Ang main routes of transmission ay through respiratory droplets. Kaya yun ang rationale kung bakit kailangan po natin magmas. And contact with secretion, respiratory secretion and saliva. Aerosol particles may be another possible mode of transmission. So SARS-CoV-2 can remain viable on various surfaces for hours to days. Although transmission is much more common through respiratory droplets than fumites. So unlike ng ibang virus na nawawala siya in few few hours, ang SARS-CoV-2 daw po ay mas matagal na tumatagal sa isang kwarto, lalo na po kung ito ay nakasarado. Fecal shedding has been detected for several weeks after diagnosis, which has led to uh, concerns about fecal oral transmission. So ang iba dito ay nakikita rin daw po sa dumi ng tao. So next slide. Uh, this picture uh, is from Salvation Surveillance and Analysis of COVID-19 in Children Nationwide. So as of se September 30, 2021, uh, 1,811 cases of COVID-19 na po ang nare-report sa Pilipinas. 56.5% dito ay mga lalaki at 43.3% ay babae. So lahat ng age group po ay naaapektuhan pero mas nakikita po ito sa edad 1 to 5 years old and 11 to 15 years old. 
Ang outcome, most of them recovered, which is 81.1%, 8.2% died, and 10.7% is unknown. Um, most of them are hospitalized, so 88.7% po rito ay nauhospital, at 11.3% lamang ang nagagamot as outpatient. For the disease severity, 17.3% dito ay asymptomatic o walang symptoms. 42.1% ay mild. 24.5% ay moderate. 8.2% ay severe. At 7.9% ay critical. Ano nga ba ang mga comorbidities na mas malala kapag tinamaan ng COVID-19? Ito po yung mga uh, may sakit sa dugo, hematologic or oncologic, may cancer. Neurologic and Developmental Diseases, Gastrointestinal Diseases, Cardiac Diseases, Obesity ay kasama rin po dito o lubhang pagkataba, Kidney Disease, Bronchial Asthma, Prematurity, Genetic Diseases, Tuberculosis, Endocrinologic Diseases, Allergy, Pregnancy, Rheumatologic, Smoking, Immunodeficiency, and Psychiatric. Ang COVID-19 ay nakikita rin sa ibang sakit, uh, co-infection, kumbaga dalawa pong sakit ang nararanasan ng isang bata. Like sepsis, dengue fever, healthcare-associated pneumonia, and tuberculosis. So next slide. Uh, clinical manifestation. Ano ba po ba ang mga nararamdaman ng mga batang may COVID-19? So, 82.7% po sa kanila ay symptomatic o may symptomas. At 17.3% lamang ang walang symptomas. So, pinaka marami pong nakikita ay 57.2% dito ay may lagnat, uh, 43% ay may ubo, at 29.4% dito ay may sipon. Ang iba pa pong symptomas ay walang ganang pagkumain, hirap sa paghinga, Pagsusuka, pagtatae, pananakit ng tiyan, kumbulsyon, pananakit ng lalamunan, pananakit ng katawan, walang panlasa at pangamoy, sakit ng ulo at mga rashes. So karaniwan sa mga batang may COVID-19 ay uh, abnormal ang chest x-ray. 73.7% dito ay hindi nangangailangan ng oxygen. Habang 26.3% naman ay kailangan ng oxygen. Pero makikita natin sa nangangailangan ng oxygen, 34.9% dito ay intubated. So sila po yung may mga severe COVID-19. So the rest po ay management na po ito. So next slide. So according to CDC of, of United States, COVID-19 cases in children can result in hospitalization, death, and long-term complication such as long COVID. So, nakikita rin po natin ito sa matatanda. Minsan po ang COVID, ang simptomas po nila tumatagal hanggang dalawang buwan. So, the spread of Delta variant resulted in surge of COVID-19 in children throughout summer. So, during a six-week period in late June to mid-August, COVID-19 hospitalization among children and adolescents increased fivefold. So vaccination along with other preventive measures can protect our children from COVID-19 using the safe and effective vaccine already recommended for the use of in adults and adolescents uh, in the United States. So dito po sa Pilipinas, nakita rin po natin ang pagtaas ng COVID-19 sa mga bata noong nagkaroon na po tayo ng Delta variant mula uh, July. So sa ngayon, maganda naman po at bumababa na po. Similar to what's seen in adult vaccine trial, vaccination was nearly 91% effective in preventing COVID-19 among children. So in clinical trials, vaccine side effects, effects are very mild and self-limiting and similar to those seen in adults and with other vaccine recommended for children. So, anong ko most common side effect? Uh, usually, sore arm po. Masakit yung site kung saan binakunahan. Pero katulad sa mga matatanda, pwede rin po silang makasa, maka, 
uh, ranas ng flu-like symptoms like ubo, sipon, uh, lagnat, uh, pagtatae. Pero po ito ay very self-limiting at supportive care lang po ang kailangan. So next slide. So according to Pedia Infectious Disease Society of the Philippines, the FDA has approved the use of Moderna and Pfizer in adolescents. So sa ngayon, ongoing na po ang pagbabakuna sa buong Pilipinas. At ang ginagamit nga po natin ay Moderna at Pfizer para sa uh, may edad 12 to 17 years old. Next slide. So, concerns regarding the safety of the mRNA vaccines has been raised. However, benefit outweighs, outweighs the potential risk. In an interim analysis of surveillance data of mRNA COVID-19 vaccine, incidence of selected serious outcome was not significantly higher 1 to 21 days post-vaccination compared with 22 to 40 day, 42 days. So talaga pong napaka-mild lang po ng uh, side effect sa mga bata. At karaniwan naman po itong nakikita kahit anong bakuna po ang natanggap natin. So next slide. A systematic review of 42 studies which included 9,353 children were evaluated for the risk of COVID-19 infection with pre-existing condition and reported that children with pre-existing condition are 1.8 times more likely to have severe infection and require intensive care. Children with pre-existing condition is 2.8 times more likely die compared to children without pre-existing condition. So ano ba yung mga uh, comorbidity na ito or pre-existing condition ng mga bata? Ito po ay obesity, chronic respiratory disease like asthma, cardiovascular disease like rheumatic heart disease, neurologic diseases, yung may mga seizure disorder, immune disorder, uh, metabolic diseases, hematologic diseases with cancer. Uh, additionally, five children had renal disease, two had GI comorbidities, and 71 children had other condi conditions. So childhood obesity was found to be likely associated with worsened prognosis. So malala po yung mga batang may mabibigat na timbang. So itong, uh, these above conditions are similar to the A3 category of the Department of Health. So katulad din po ito ng A3 category ng matatanda. So next slide. The PPS and PIDSP recommended that older and more vulnerable age groups should be still prioritized in the vaccination rollout with an equitable distribution among different regions of the country. So priority pa rin natin is yung mga matatanda, lalo na po yung mga senior citizen at may mga sakit. So once the whole country has a sufficient percentage uh, vaccinated in the priority adult group, Children 12 years old and above may be considered for vaccination. The vaccine rollout can be initiated in high transmission areas and should be prioritized, should prioritize the adolescents that are qualified in the A3 and A1 category. So sa Bulacan po, uh, particularly sa nasa Del Monte Bulacan, 65% uh, uh, of the adult age group are already vaccinated. So, kaya po, pwede na po talaga tayo mag-start. Actually, nagsisimula na po tayo ng bakunahan sa mga adolescent, uh, 12, ages 12 to 17 years old. So, next slide. Immunization against COVID-19 in the pediatric population, age 12 to 17 years old has only begun over the past month. So, for children younger than 12 years old of age, wala pa pong bakuna na na-approve ang FDA sa mga edad tw below 12 years old. So as such, this population segment does not have similar protective immunity as that seen in the adult population and children are remain at risk of exposure and subsequent infection. It is also known that up to half, half of the children can be asymptomatic when infected with SARS-CoV-2. 
So kasi naki, uh, all eligible household members and children must be vaccinated against COVID-19 whenever possible. Sa so ngayon po kasi nakikita natin ang trend, lalo na po sa mall, napakarami na pong edad na one, actually one year, so gisan baby nga po nakikita natin sa mall. So tandaan po natin, wala pa pong bakuna na, na naa-approbahan uh, sa mga 11 years old pa baba. So, kailangan po natin uh, sundin pa rin ang preventive measure. So, next slide. Parents and caregivers of young children, notably those below 5 years of age, are highly discouraged from bringing children to public and closed or crowded spaces as responsible guardians. So, they are urged to implement infection prevention and control measures especially when going outside of their home. So, mas maganda kung ilalabas po natin sila dun po sa outdoor spaces, practice physical distancing pa rin po, one meter, and hand hygiene, wear face masks, among others. So, next slide. The PPS and PIDSP call on the public to continue infection prevention efforts against COVID-19 with particular focus on protecting children by exercising prudence when bringing them out in public and by immunizing all those eligible for COVID-19 vaccination. So, next slide. Ito po ay pinakikita, uh, uh, it's entitled Multiple Effort Against COVID-19 Infection. Kung paano po natin maiiwasan ang COVID-19. Meron po ito, nahahati po ito sa personal responsibilities and shared responsibilities. For the personal responsibilities, we should have a uh, stay uh, at home kung may sakit po tayo, practice physical distancing, one meter and above, hand eye hygiene, cough etiquette, if crowded, limit your time, pagsuot po ng face mask, avoid touching your face, especially kung hindi nyo po alam kung kontaminado na po ito. Shared responsibilities like uh, ventilation. Uh, so, ventilation, di ba maganda po may at least sa isang kwarto kung magbukas po tayo ng isa o dalawang uh, windows. Uh, remain outdoor, mas maganda po kung nasa labas kung magtatagal po tayong magkakasama. Air filtration, quarantine and isolation sa mga may sakit. At magpa-test kung kailangan. Uh, government messaging and financial support like uh, ngayon, uh, laganap na po ang mga information kung paano natin mapapa, maiiwasan ng COVID-19 and of course, vaccine. So, the next slide po, uh, ito po ay galing na po sa Department of Health. Overview lamang po ito ng uh, uh, guidelines regarding pediatric COVID vaccination sa Pilipinas. So, uh, IATF Resolution Number 141 states that beginning on October 2021, the vac vaccination of pediatric population uh, 12 to 17 years old with vaccines granted emergency use of authorization by the FDA shall be piloted under a phase approach as may be determined by the National Vaccination Operations Center. Next slide. So, what, ano nga ba ang rationale kung bakit natin kailangan implement ang pagbabakuna sa edad 12 to 17 years old? Uh, higher, number one is higher risk for COVID-19 infection in pediatric population with medical condition. Su sufficient available vaccine supply. So, marami na po tayong bakuna, kaya pwede na po tayong magbakuna para sa mga bata. Facilitate the opening of school and improve educational experience of adolescent. So hopefully, kung mataatain po natin ang 90% na mababakunahan na kabataan, ay makapagbukas na po tayo ng mga eskwelahan. And mitigate the social, mental, and emotional toil that the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has caused the adolescent population. So, alam naman po natin na lubha pong naapektuhan ang pag-aaral, uh, ang pakikipalasalamuha ng ating mga kabataan dahil ngayon nga po, uh, 
lagi na lang po silang nasa bahay. So, next slide. Uh, ito, pinakikita lamang po kung ano po ang mga A3 sa bata. So, katulad na rin po na na-discuss natin kanina. So, next slide. So, ito po ang total target population ng edad 12 to 17 years old sa buong Pilipinas. So, 12,722,070. Those with comorbidities is 1,272,207. And ROPP means rest of the pediatric population. It's 11,449,863. So, sa Region 3, ang target population po natin ang may comorbidity ay 138,996 and uh, ROPP is 1,250,966. So as of uh, this week, ang um, reported uh, na, na nababakunahan na po sa San Jose na kabataan edad 12 to 17 years old ay nasa 40 percent and above na po, which is napakaganda kasi kakasimula pa lang po naman natin ang bakunahan. Wala pa pong one month. Next slide. So, uh, ito po ay rollout strategy of COVID-19 vaccine in the pediatric population. I-discuss po natin ito later sa, sa mga susunod na slide. Next slide. So what are the general guidelines yung sinabi ni Sir Randall kanina? Kung ano bang general guideline for para makakuha ka ng uh, bakuna para sa inyong mga anak. So the ROPP age 12 to 17 years old are recommended to be vaccinated with COVID-19 vaccine with EUA from the Philippine FDA. So, only COVID vaccine na naaprobahan po ng FDA ang ibibigay natin sa edad 12 to 17 years old. Ito nga po sa ngayon ay Pfizer at Moderna. So, the COVID-19 vaccine process, katulad po ng matanda, nandun po ang registration, screening, counseling, vaccines recipient uh, reporting, and adverse monitoring of adverse event. Next slide. So, instruction for COVID-19 vaccination, providers and administration of storage and handling, dosing and schedule, and administration, contraindication, warnings, adverse reaction, and use with other vaccines shall follow Philippine FDA EUA. So, para na po sa mga nagbabakuna. Next slide. So, ano nga ba yung eligible population? Lahat po ng batang 12 to 17 years old, ay makakategorize as rest of the pediatric population. Next slide. So, implementation of COVID-19 vaccine uh, rollout has started na po noong November 3, 2021 and fully implemented last November 5, 2021. The NVOC aims to vaccinate at least 80% ng ating kabataan bago matapos ang December 2021. So, ang pagbabakuna po sa mga bata ay ginagawa na po natin sa ating regular vaccination sites. However, ang mga A3 or pediatric, pediat, pediatric population with comorbidities ay ginaganap natin ngayon sa ospital ng lungsod. So, next slide. So, katulad din po ng kanina, ang binabakuna lang po natin sa bata ay, ay may approval ng FDA. Next slide. Master listing of the ROPP, age 12 to 17 years old, is not required. However, pre-registration based on the process required by the LGU is necessary. So, kanina sinabi ni Sir Randall kung ano ba yung process, kung paano po mababakunahan ang mga bata. So ngayon, ginagawa po natin ito. Noong una, nag, naglilista po tayo or pre-registered. Pero sa ngayon, uh, dahil napakarami po namin vaccination site at kaya naman po natin i-accommodate ang mga bata, pwede na po silang mag-walk-in. Basta uh, dala lang po nila ang mga necessary documents. So mamaya po i-discuss po natin iyon. Next slide. So ito na po yun. Documents to prove 
affiliation and age, uh, valid identification card or documents with photo of the parent or guardian, and the vaccine recipient to verify document presented. So next slide. Ang pinaka-importante na dala ng bata is uh, sana kahit ito lang po ang dala niya, birth certificate. Kasi dito po makikita nyo na po ang uh, pangalan ng bata, kung kailan po siya pinanganak, tunay na edad, ang mga pangalan ng mga gulang. So, kumpleto na siya basically. So, para po sa mga secondary documents, yung mga iba pang pwedeng dalhin, is authenticated medical certificate. Ito po ay para sa may mga A3 or comorbidity. Kailangan po nila ito sa ospital bago bakunahan ang bata na pinapayagan na po silang pabakunahan ng kanilang mga pediatrician. Uh, pwede rin po ang baptismal certificate, school ID, mga uh, PhilHealth, SSS or GSIRS, uh, insurance policies pwede rin po. Next slide. So, barangay certificate, minsan po ito ang hinihingi namin sa mga batang aban abandoned na or namatay na po ang parehong magulang. Ito po ay pinipirmahan ni Kapitan na uh, magkakaroon siya ng isang legal guardian uh, na tumatayo na pong nag-aalaga sa bata. PWDID pwede rin po. So, next slide. So the vaccine recipient shall be accompanied by a parent or guardian at the vaccination site. So dapat po may kasama ang bata, hindi pwedeng siya lang. Uh, so ito yung mga documents na diniscuss natin kanina, kailangan po dala ni po nila. So ano ba yung mga dapat kasama ng bata? Sino ang pwede nating uh, tanggapin? Pwede naming tanggapin as guardian. Next slide na po. So, unang-una, syempre sana magulang. Kung wala po ang magulang, yung iba po nasa abroad, surviving grandparent. Kung wala pa rin po, oldest brother or sister over 21 years old na fit para maging, uh, maging guardian ng bata. So, in case of foundlings, abandoned, neglected, or abused children, heads of children's home, orphanages, and similar institution duly accredited by the accredited by the TSWD. So sa ngayon, kasi ma, uh, dahil nagsimula na po tayo, may mga nakita po kaming problem ng mga bata, although gusto nila magpakabakuna, wala po talaga silang makita sa na pwedeng sumama sa kanila. So sa ngayon po pinapayagan na po natin ang mga tita at tito basta, uh, or may mga uh, kalapit na kamag-anak like mga pinsan, basta uh, sila ay may edad 21 years old and above and if possible meron po silang uh, authorization letter kahit po through email na may signature po ng parents or grandparents or kapatid. So next slide. So without the signed informed consent of the parent or guardian or any individual authorized the vaccination recipient shall be deferred for COVID-19 vaccine unless madala niya po lahat ng necessary documents. He or she shall not be coerced to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. In case the vaccine recipient is not capable of giving assent due to neurologic comorbidities and moderate to severe intellectual impairment, the parent or the authorized parental substitute can sign on his or his behalf. So, uh, ito rin po pa rin po yung vaccination process. And po rin, par, meron pa rin pong health screening and assessment. Vital signs ay tinitake pa rin po usually after the vaccination or pag mga obis po, pinibipi na po namin ng mas uh, bago, pa, bago bakunahan. So, only vaccine recipient, recipients cleared by the health screener or physician will receive the COVID-19 vaccine and shall proceed to vaccine administration area. So next slide. So be, before administering the COVID-19 vaccine, meron po tayong informed consent na pipirmahan, screening, uh, signed health screening form as cleared by the health screener, 
So ang bibigay, ibibigay po natin ay required dosage as stipulated in the EUA by the Philippine FDA. And the parent and guardian must be physically present during the vaccine administration. Minsan po kasi nakikita namin sa mga bata, pag natapos na po sila sa registration, iniiwan na po ng mga magulang. Pag nandun na po tayo sa vaccination or actually sa screening pa lang, wala na po sila. So dapat huwag po natin iwanan ang mga anak natin hanggang matapos po yung pagbabakuna. So next slide. So after vaccination, the vaccine recipient shall stay sa close vaccination monitoring. Sila dito na po sila monitor for 15 to 30 minutes. So next slide. So tandaan po natin, um, kailangan pa rin po natin i-practice ang mga health protocol like uh, wearing face mask, uh, at least one meter distance from each other, uh, hand hygiene, and always makibalita po tayo sa uh, development uh, against COVID-19 and uh, we heal as one. Thank you. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Legaspi.